Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. My new book, Diary of a Psychosis, is out. It's the most lively, devastating baseball bat to the throat takedown of what the public health establishment did in 2020 and beyond that you can imagine. It's my first book in nine years, and you're going to love it. Check it out at diaryofcovid.com. And if you've already bought it, make sure also to visit diaryofcovid.com so you can claim your free bonuses, including my free companion volume, Collateral Damage, a collection of stories from real people who suffered under the restrictions. They weren't allowed to tell their stories at the time, but every one of them told me, we just want to be heard. Check it all out at diaryofcovid.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Woods Show, episode 2468, with our old friend Mike Church. And I mean, I mean old friend. And I, I don't mean that Mike is old, really. I mean, we've known Mike for a long time uh, here at the Tom Woods Show. Uh, but it has been quite a long time. Seven years, he tells me, since I've talked to him on the Tom Woods Show. I was just on Mike's show not so long ago. Um, but you may remember old Mike Church from the Ron Paul days. He was a great champion of ours. I used to go on his show to to launch my books as they would come out. I always would have the Mike Church show as the show that would launch that book. And and Mike has just been a stalwart friend over the years. He was were you were you the first? This can't be. Were you the first talk show on? Well, maybe even before they they merged Sirius and XM. First talk show ever on Sirius, and then. Uh, I would have to share that title with a couple other people on Sirius XM, but we started with Sirius in 2002, uh, long before they even knew that the thing was going to work. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they, they launched the birds and gave a bunch of free radios away to some truckers to test it. Yeah. And we were on. So yeah, 2002. And, um, we'll get into some of, we'll fill in some of the blanks here cause it's, it's all very interesting. For a while, you had your own kind of network, and now you've returned actually to terrestrial radio out of where? Okay, so we still had the uh, the network. It's called the Crusade Radio Network. Um, uh, and then we went nationally syndicated on what I call terrestrial radio, AM, FM. And our flagship station is in Atlanta, Georgia. It's 1010 WXKG. And it's an old school FM, or it's an old school AM. Actually, actually I think that signal... Uh, probably went dark for a little while, even though it's 50,000 watts. Um, they lost, uh, you know, a lot of radio stations were lost thanks to your favorite subject and mine, consolidation. Yeah. Big big coming in and gobbling everything up and then ruining everything uh, that it touches, right? So, um, terrestrial, I don't know if you, uh, how much you get to listen to terrestrial radio or AM, FM radio uh, these days. It's a, it's a boneyard. Yeah. It's an absolute cemetery. I mean, the, the ones that are left, literally, your old friend and mine, Mark Levin, is like king of the hill. Um, yeah. And, and you were talking about your Facebook friends. You got a new Facebook friends are wrong about everything. Mark Levin is wrong about everything. But he's still at the top of the heap in talk radio. They don't tell you how bad off talk radio is today. Well, I remember you. Now, folks, stay with us here because Mike Church is one of our one of our heroes. And I, I want to get into some of the the issues going on in radio. Now, you may say AM radio is is old hat. Uh, you know that it's it's uh, it's a dinosaur. It's on its way out. Can I assume that they have a website that streams? It does. Yes. Okay. So you can all, you can always get it that way. But I remember you used to be on ridiculously early in the morning, and you would want me to come on, and it would be like torture for me. Torture. The only time I listened to the Mike Church show was when I had to get up for an early flight, and I would turn on Mike Church as the one consolation I had um, being being up then. But, you know, I want to ask you something because I think there's a parallel between, um, possibly, between you and Pat Buchanan on a major issue. When Pat was on MSNBC, and this seems like from a, another universe, to, to realize that Pat was a fixture on MSNBC. And uh, it, the Iraq War, the first one, or, or no, I guess, no, I beg your pardon, I guess I'm trying, losing track of the Iraq Wars, the second Iraq War, came along, and Pat was arguing against it. And they actually told him, and I, I said this on the show recently, uh, and I don't think it's sunk in enough to people, so I'm going to say, say it again. I, or 
I, I, I think we need to repeat this. They said to him, uh, Pat, we have you here to represent the Republican point of view, and the Republicans are in favor of the war. We already have anti-war people, so, you know, get your act together. Did you, didn't you f face something kind of similar to that? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I interviewed Pat when all this was going on. I had him on the Mike Churchill on the SiriusXM Patriot channel. So I can tell you how frustrating it was for him. But he, you know, he's an Irishman. He just rolls. He's like Marion Morris. He's like John Wayne and the uh, and the and uh, the Family Man. He just rolls with the punches. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I was told going into the 2012 election that the that the Patri uh, the SiriusXM Patriot Channel that this was the Republican channel on the SiriusXM platform. And that I was going to get in line and tell the line, and I was going to support. They wanted me to like take the pledge, like will you will you will you endorse or support the Republican nominee? And I said, if it's Romney, no, <laughs> I most certainly will not. And so that ultimately turned into them saying, well, can you just keep more quiet about it? And you know, look, they, Tom, they did the same thing to me in two thousand eight with uh, with with McCain. And, I, and, you know, I, 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 it wasn't as, because they had just started then, so it wasn't nearly as harsh. But, yeah, twice they asked me to be a good Republican, and both times I turned them down. I told them no. So, yes, I was the token, I, I was the token quasi-libertarian on, uh, on the Patriot Channel, but I refused to be a Republican that would tow that party line because you know all the reasons why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it would be interesting to see how they would enforce something like that today, given how divided against itself the Republican Party is. You can have a variety of perspectives and still be, you know, in good standing. It's not as lonely anymore, I think. You know, it's uh, it's really interesting. It's cool to kind of watch Trump, this wrecking ball, going through the party. Stuff that you and I and Kevin and friends of ours have been talking about for decades. Uh, make America great again. What's that? That's Pat Buchanan's America First agenda, right? This is, I mean, you, you, have, you have Trump yesterday in Ohio going like, you build a Chinese car, you try to sell it in the U.S., I'm going to 100% tariff that joker. And well, I'm going like, yeah. Wait, wait, back, back up for a minute, back <laughs> up for a minute. The key thing about that speech wasn't the trade stuff. It was what the media did with the speech. Yes. Because, because it, we, we are now in the middle, as you and I record this, of bloodbath gate. <laughs> because <laughs> do you want to, Yeah, I, I don't want to take all the fun out of the interview, uh, Mike, I let let you explain. Can you explain what bloodbath gate is? <laughs> well, so Trump is uh, going through this whole thing about the Chinese cars and the Chinese tariffs. Xi, he's a friend of mine, beautiful guy, beautiful man, good friend. Love, love Xi. You, Xi and I are good. We're really good together. But he knows how I roll and how we do business. And I told, I'm going to tell you, Xi, you send those cars over here. I'm going to 100 percent tariff. I'm 100 percent. You're not going to flood our market. So he says that if you re if you elect me, I will tariff the Chinese and I will restore American industry, basically is what he said. And he says, if you don't elect me, if you elect Biden, oh, that numbskull. He said, if you elect Biden, then it's going to be a bloodbath. The auto industry, the problem with Trump is, is he, when he thinks outside the box, he, he has a tendency to not finish sentences. So we didn't finish the sentence. It's going to be a bloodbath in the auto industry. It, that's what he meant, because that's and what he was talking obvious, about. It's obvious. It's obvious. Read the text. <laughs> and so they're all, the media is all responding that, uh, I actually said, NBC News said, Trump threatens a bloodbath if he doesn't, or no, Trump vows. <laughs> he vows a blood. So that sounds like it's his initiative that the bloodbath will occur. But his point is, he's obviously not talking about a literal bloodbath in that sense. He's talking about the secondary definition of bloodbath which is a whole lot of damage being done. And he's not saying it'll be him doing it. It's, it's the result of the policies. He's not saying, if I don't get elected, I'm going to grab a gun, go out in the street, and start mowing people down. <laughs> I mean, right? No, that's what Democrats do. That's but, what the agents of the Democrat Party are literally doing. They are literally, I call it treason air. I don't know what you call it. Treason air. That's the the, uh, the the planes that are being used to fly in. First, we thought it was 320,000 uh, illegal alien, what I call illegal alien criminal trespassers in 2023. No, that was the short number. 
There's another program that Biden uses where they fly in 30,000 a month in 2023. So add the 30 times 12 kids. You're all good mathematicians out there. Uh, that's 360,000. They admitted to the 320,000. Add it together. Trees and air flew in 680,000 illegal alien criminal trespassers in 2023 alone. Alone. Um, these are people that are coming from prisons. These are people that are coming from gangs. These are people that are coming from El Salvador. They're coming from Nicaragua. They're coming from Haiti. They're coming from uh, Venezuela. They're coming from Cuba. Um, uh, so this is what the Democrat Party is actually literally importing the criminal element into the United States in exchange for, yes, we will find a way to get you to a mail-in ballot box so you can cast your ballot for Joe Biden. Like some Venezuelan official even came out the other day and said to the U.S., I really don't think you should be doing this. Like you're, <laughs> I mean, like even they said, why would you do this? <laughs> why would you go out of your way? It, it makes no sense. Now, by the way, on those cars, I mean, look, the, the average American has, pro I don't know what the statistic is on how much a new car, the price of a new car has gone up. But you know that the Democrats in particular on this one are, are terrible because they're always in, insisting on higher and higher standards and, and more and more unreasonable requirements, yeah. which w what is the result of that? The, the price of the car gets higher. Now, from the point of view of the Democrats, that's not a problem because they despise people and cars. So if you can't afford a car, that is not a problem. Now, they won't publicly say that, but they'll almost, they'll almost publicly say that. So I personally, I don't like that. I would rather see Trump say, I'm going to just undo all those things rather than say, oh, by the way, if there is somebody trying to sell you a cheap car, I'm going to make sure you can't get that one either. You know, there are plenty of things going on right now he could, he could uh, knock away at, which I think, by the way, he might do. He might. Well, let's be good libertarians for just a moment. I asked this question on the radio show this morning. I'll, I'll ask it to the Tom Woods audience. Why can't Mike Church and Tom Woods go to a Walmart and go shopping for a car that is, I'm trying to find a blank piece of paper here, that is nothing more, white piece of paper that says in black print, C-A-R, car. I don't, I don't need any stinking airbags. I don't need disc brakes. I don't need air conditioning. I don't need power windows. I don't need Bluetooth. I don't need the tracking box. Yeah. I don't need electronic ignition. I don't need anything. I need four wheels, a four-cylinder engine, a drivetrain, and a couple of seats. Yeah. And, and it will help to make a little bit. Do you know who's making this car, though, Tom? Suzuki. Suzuki makes a Suzuki Carry. You can get one brand spanking new, 9000 US dollars. $9,000. The side of the truck bed goes down. It's a four-lane truck bed. It's eight feet long. You see these the, 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 these housewives out there that are buying pickup trucks? They shorten the bed to six feet so they could have the extended cab, right? But you could actually get Mike Church's white paper, black print, C-A-R. You can actually get one in Japan and in Korea and Vietnam, anywhere in the civilization world for less than $9,000 U.S. dollars. Now, why can't we get that automobile? Why can't we get that car here? Because it's illegal. They made it illegal. So yeah, if Trump wants to do something, empower American genius who would make Mike Church and Tom Woods white paper, black print, C-A-R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so it, it's the typical logic of um, if we require that all cars have X, Y, and Z, then therefore everyone will have a car with X, Y, and Z. But see, that's a fallacy. Um, what, what will actually happen is a lot of people just won't have a car. Or they'll have to go get a, a, a really beat up, unreliable car they have to take in the shop every three weeks, which they can't afford to do. Uh, so some, somebody's getting rich off this, Mike, and I have something tells me it ain't you or me. Never is, is it? Well, okay, you asked the question. The average retail here, where's Bob Barker when I need him? Where's George Johnny Olson? Average retail price is $49,682. What? That is the average retail price of an automobile made by the big three. $49,682. Trump said it at the rally. He, he gave the price out. He, uh -huh. read it off a few, he read it off a piece of paper. That is simply ridiculous. You're, you're, you can't afford, that's a house note 10 years, 20 years ago. You're living in a condo for $49,000. Yeah, yeah. Hey folks, where would you be without old Woods reminding you about important things like the safety net that life insurance gives you? So if something were to happen to you, your family could cover their expenses while getting back on their feet. 
Well, our friends at Policy Genius will help you do exactly that. I have great peace of mind because my family is provided for with my life insurance policy. And I remember thinking, if I get a big life insurance policy, that is going to cost me a fortune. To the contrary, I was shocked at how inexpensive it is, but it gets more expensive as you get older. So you got to act as soon as possible. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. And even if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it may not offer the protection your family needs. And it might not follow you if you leave your job. Well, at Policy Genius, with just a few clicks, you'll be comparing quotes from top insurance companies and finding your best price. The licensed, award-winning agents at Policy Genius can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not for the insurance companies, so there's no bias involved. They can give you the best advice. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description or on the show notes page to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm in the process of buying it. Well, I, actually, I can't say. I was about to say something that if it got out, would spoil a surprise for a family member. So, <laughs> so we, you and I are talking about this off the air, Mike. <laughs> All right. So, so you've been around a long time. Like before you did Sirius, how did you get, like, what was your real start? Well, I started as something that Obama killed, I started as an intern. So I interned at a little AM radio station in, in the outskirts of New Orleans in 1991. And I interned, volunteered my own time. I had a full-time job. I'd work in the afternoons. I volunteered at a little station, WSLA, in Slidell, Louisiana. Came in one day to do my intern gig to find a bunch of cop cars in the, uh, in the parking lot. <laughs> They're going, like, hey, what's going on here? Well, apparently the people that were, that I was interning for, that I was running the, helping the uh, answer the phones and whatever interns did at that time, uh, were running a radio station and uh, they were basically kind of like organized crime. <laughs> and there was a danger that they were going to lose the FCC license. So the guy oh. that owned the station, yeah, fired all of them. I show up and the guy that I've been working with, he's standing at the door. He goes, how'd you like to do a radio show? And I went, dude, I'm like the intern. <laughs> and he, <laughs> He's like, you don't have to do it today. Let me give you a week to get your stuff together. What do you say? And I went, okay, sure. And on April the 21st, 20, 1992, the Mike Church Show launched on WSLA, 1560 AM in Slidell. Now, Katie, that's what's called your lucky break. Yeah. Oh, that is crazy lucky. So, um, do you know who my first guest was? No, tell me. Congressman Robert Livingston. Do you remember Bob Livingston? The name rings a bell, but I couldn't tell you anything about him. Okay, so he was a Republican. Uh, he worked his way up to majority leader under Newt, and then Newt resigns, right? And then Bob becomes Speaker of the House. Well, this is at the time that Media Matters has gone from being David Brock friendly to American spectator and conservatives to being an enemy of the human race, right? <laughs> And, and Brock puts a PI on Bob's tail, basically, to find out that Bob's been, uh, he's been Nathan waiting around, if you will. He trumps it. Nathan Wade, he's not good at much, but he's good at. <laughs> so Livingston loses the speaker's gavel, has to resign from Congress. And guess where he goes? Take a guess. You'll never, you'll, you'll, you won't get it right. Go ahead, take a guess. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he certainly didn't come to work with a Mike Church show. So what? K Street. Of oh, course. Of course. Come on. So he went from making 135000 to $1.35 million Just overnight. like that. Just like that. Yeah. So Bob was my first uh, guest. And at the time, you know, Bob was a, a very successful uh, small businessman. And he represented the, the district that Steve Scalise represents today. That's Louisiana 1. And so Bob was my congressman. And I called his office and invited him on. And he actually drove over. And to slide out, which was a 30 minute drive for him and actually sat down and I interviewed him in person. My first ever interview was a member of the house of representatives. So, uh, okay. So. Okay. Um, what is the weirdest thing that ever happened to you while you were on the radio? 
<laughs> you gotta have Dolly, one. that's a whoo. Thirty-two years of doing this, folks. Some weird stuff. Like stories you would tell people. You go home and say, "Honey, I'm home. I'm going to tell you what happened." I was working at six ten WIOD in Miami, and there was a guy that was on the sister station, which was thirteen forty a.m., and his name was Steve Kane. And Kane was one of these old radio hucksters. Worse than Levin. If you can imagine, though, worse than Levin. And Kane had heard me. Um, and the, look, this is neocon, Mike Churchill. This is, <laughs> you don't want to know this, Mike Church. Uh, this is a rock war, yeah. Um, I'm doing my show. And it's on in the, uh, in the evenings from 7 to 10. And I see the producing door open, and it's Kane. And I'm wondering, and I had heard that he was like he didn't like me. And I'm going like, wow, what in the hell is this guy doing here? And so he he says something to the guy that's producing my show, and then he goes out the door. And I'm thinking like, oh, thank the Lord he's leaving. No, no, he's making the loop around to come and sit in with me. So he's given orders to the board of producer to put him on. And then ensues a three-hour-long su supposed debate with this guy just calling me every name that he can think of. You know, you're a radical Republican. You you hate gay people. You do this. You know, the usual stuff here. But for a three, I couldn't get rid of him. So, so it's, it's one of those things that I will uh, that I will remember forevermore. But it was the Steve and Mike show for one night uh, in, uh, in 1998. <laughs> so that was a strange one. But what about people like uh, flaking on you? Like you must have that a lot. Like, well, not a lot, but uh, such and such guest, maybe a U.S. congressman supposed to be on it for a, for a quick hit at 6.03 a.m. and no sign of it. Okay, I can, well, uh, <laughs> I won't tell you his name. But you know him very, very well. And he booked the, the date and the time on the Sirius XM Patriot channel. And he was a complete and total no-show. And I didn't hear from him for like a whole day, so I wrote him. Again, I won't tell you who it is. I wrote him, and I'm like, dude. And he, he, he well, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I won't even, because I don't want somebody guessing. I'm not even going to tell you what he told me happened. But I was stood up by a titan of the libertarian movement. And uh, let's just say that the uh, the reason given was a, a little bit suspect. I had no idea. But I'll tell you, I interviewed John Stossel had a book that came out in 2009, 2010. And so I interviewed Stossel. Tom, he was baked. He was absolutely stoned. What? <laughs> He was, I, 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 I'm going to the book, you know, they give you these goofy, uh, uh, your publisher would send me your book and would send me, this is the list of things that you should ask Tom Woods. So I take that and go like, yeah, tear it up. And, uh, you know, I'll go to the book and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll dog ear pages. So I started, had, I had Stossel's book and I went through it. And I well, said, so, well, where's John Stossel? It's like, some stuff. So I said, uh, John Stossel, ABC News, got a new book out. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, John, how you doing? Then we're welcome, to, welcome to the Mike Church Show on the Sirius XM Patriot channel. And he goes, hey, yeah, Mike, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me, man. And so I'm going like, so as we go on, it gets, I'm asking him questions. He's like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that really, really is something that we should really do something about. I'm telling you, he was Baked out of his mind. Now, I'll give you another baked story. Do you remember the TV show Cheers? Of course, I loved it. You remember my buddy? Oh, God, God rest his soul. I love that man, Jay Thomas. Oh, sure. Eddie, Le the guy Eddie LeBeck. Yeah. Eddie LeBeck, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when Jay Thomas signs with Sirius Satellite Radio in 2004, he's a New Orleanian. I'm a New Orleanian. Hey, hey, where yeah, bro? Uh, Jay comes over and uh, they call me from Sirius XM and I said, hey, when you're done, can you get Jay Thomas on on your ISDN connection and let him use your studio? And I went, Eddie LeBeck wants to use my studio? Yeah. <laughs> so 
Jay comes over and we meet, and then Jay starts uh, from 2004 until he died in 2014, so for a decade. Jay Thomas, whenever he was in New Orleans, would come and use my studio, uh, my little palace that I had built. And uh, we became really, really good friends. Um, the first show Jay does, okay, it's the day before Mardi Gras. So it's Lundi Gras, tw 2004. So uh, I'm going on at, at three, and Jay is going on from like noon to three. So he comes in, and and he's he's seeing, I show him where everything is. He goes, I got a guest coming on. So where do you you could take phone calls and all that, right? And I said, Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So the guest calls in. Guess who the guest was? Steven Seagal. Oh, okay. Steven Seagal was drunk and stoned. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? <laughs> but Jay, Jay Thomas is such a good comedian. He was so good. He just mocked him for an hour. And I don't think that Seagal knew, knew what was going on. And, he, and people were calling and they were muting the audio so Seagal couldn't hear it. And they were making fun of Steven Seagal. <laughs> So that was kind of another uh, uh, another stone story. Uh, Jay, uh, um, Jay, Jay Thomas, whenever he was in that studio, you'd never know what kind of a guest he was going to get. And sometimes I'd be hanging around, and, he, and he'd see me in the other room, and, he, and he, he tried to play like he was a liberal. So he'd go, wow, why don't we ask him? He'd, use, he'd drop an F-bomb because he could. He'd go, why don't we ask the blanking ra radical nutbag conservatives in the other room? White church, kick your microphone on. And I, I want to I ask you a question. The people out there want to ask a real crazy person a question. <laughs> so Jay would throw me on <laughs> impromptu. It was a really, uh, in the early days of satellite radio and all the way up through uh, about 2012 until Stern basically ruined it for everyone. Um, first, first six years, no one knew what satellite radio was. I'd have to draw them a picture and explain it to them. By the time 2012, when it's built into, uh, into most cars, OEM they call it now, People know what satellite radio is, this kind of thing. It's when you and I are selling a lot of books. You're writing a lot of books. I'm, I'm interviewing you. I'm, inter I'm, I'm interviewing Ron. I'm interviewing Rand. Uh, it was a golden age of satellite radio. They, it, for, a, for four years there or so, they actually cared about the spoken word product on Sirius XM. I don't think they give a crap about it anymore. That's, and it's, that's just my personal take. Because if they did, then they would pick me up in syndication and they put me back on. Yeah, well... Because you know, where your views have become more popular since you were first promoting them. <laughs> Isn't that amazing that the world has caught up to me and you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's getting there. It's uh, if, if it had fully caught up, I wouldn't be as uh, uneasy about the state of things. I still am. But but some people are starting to to understand things a little bit better. You know, I, I the only I've never had, to my knowledge, anybody on who was under the influence of anything. Um. I have my suspicions, that, but I can't really prove them. But I will say, um, you almost certainly don't know this, that I actually myself did a drunk episode of the Tom Woods Show, episode 1990. Uh, <laughs> TomWoods.com slash 1990 was my drunk episode. And I didn't do this, you know, to be like some cheeky guy, look at me, I'm drinking on the show. It wasn't that at all. I was in beautiful Savannah, Georgia, which I, I only visited a couple of times, but it's a, it's a great place. And yeah. Wife and I had gone to a, a great restaurant that had, uh, I mean, we were there for like three hours. It was one of these multiple courses, tasting menu, and we had the one, we purchased the upsell of the wine pairing with each plate. And I'll just say, um, Mike, my, my drinking skills are not what they were in graduate school. <laughs> so by the time we get back, I, I had to record an episode that night. I was not really in a position to do that. But I said to myself, doggone it, I'm going to gird my loins and go into battle here. You know, I'm going to do it. And I got old Peter Klein from Baylor University on. And if you listen to episode 1990, you will not say that sounds like a drunk guy unless you've listened to me a lot. And you'll know well enough that I'm trying too hard to sound smart. You know, I'm trying to overcompensate for the drunkenness by being as articulate as I can. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, I, I got a Stossel story for you. Not as good as yours, but how, how very few would be. Yeah. My Stossel story is, uh, I'm <laughs> going on his show. He's never heard of me before. So before the cameras go on, he says to me, because at that time I was living in, I shudder to say it, Kansas. Mm. And 
he and what he sees on his prompt is that I'm a historian from Kansas. And that to him sounds like the most boring description of any person he's ever seen. So he says to me, I got to tell you, there are a lot of other channels people could switch on to. And some of those channels have dancing girls on. We have to give them a really good reason not to switch on to the dancing girls. So he was basically saying, don't bore everybody to death. <laughs> now, this clip is still, he, well, obviously that part's not recorded, but my clip with him is on YouTube, and I did not bore him, that's for sure. So after it was all over, he was completely relieved. He realized he had nothing to worry about. But, he, but I thought, yeah, you haven't seen me give a speech. I don't put people to sleep. You don't, don't have to worry about this. All right, by the <laughs> way, you, you, you just kind of happen to glide over what I think some listeners who may not be familiar with you may want to know a little bit more about. You're talking about a Mike Church that we might not have cared for all that much. How did that Mike Church become this Mike Church? Ron Paul. Wow, let's hear the story. Ron Paul. Ron Paul, what? 2000, actually, Kevin Goodsman. So oh, I get, I get a, a promo book in the mail from Regnery Publishing. Guess what it is? Politically Incorrect Guide to the Constitution. Oh, great book. Great so, book. This is 2007 when it comes out. So uh, I've always been, you know, I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So, and this is at a time when uh, public schools in Virginia were still pretty decent. And they had a really, really healthy respect and kind of like a, an admiration for the Virginia gentry, as you might call it, right? Patrick Henry, George Mason, James Madison, uh, you, your founding fathers, Peyton Randolph, the whole shebang. So I grew up as a child, uh, as an admirer of Patrick Henry. As a matter of fact, when I was in fourth grade, I was chosen out of all the kids in the school to be uh, for the school uh, reenactment play of the Liberty or Death speech. I got to play Patrick Henry as a, as a fourth grader. I had to memorize that speech. Well, they, they cut it down to a page, but I had to memorize it. So I grew up just a, a, as an admirer. You know, we, we went to Williamsburg. We went to the House of Burgesses. We went to... The, when it was still okay, we went to the Confederate Museum when I was a child. So I was a lover of history. They taught me history. And U.S. Virginia history is some of the most exciting history, right? You know this. You, you've written about it. So in 2007, when this book shows up, The Political Incorrect Guide to the Constitution, I looked at it, and I saw my founding father heroes on the cover, and I went, oh, this looks interesting. Matter, you got to remember, I am a dyed-in-the-wool neocon. I am a fire-breathing, if it moves, bomb it. Uh, the George Carlin bit would describe me. We like bombing brown people. You got some, your country's got some brown people and tell them to watch the scout or we'll f***ing bomb them. That's me. I read the pig and I'm going like, I didn't know any of this stuff. What is this incorporation doctrine? What are you talking about? So I called him up. I said, can I get this Kevin Goodsman guy as a guest? He goes, yeah, absolutely. He'd love to do it. And then a star is born. Goodsman becomes radio gold, right? Uh, so I interview Kevin. So I'm I'm reading this book and I'm thinking like, wow, what is this? I don't know anything. I didn't know any of this. Learning about incorporation, you know, learning all the stuff that you that you should know. Well, about that time, 2008 campaign comes along, right? And I hear this 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 sweet little old man, but I hear him as a neocon, and I'm going, who is this pacifist wacko, Ron Paul? So I started listening to Ron Paul, reading Gutsman. So I'm starting to read some other things that are America first, I guess, if you will. I might even been, when, when did Play Game, Play Game Great Guide to American History come out? Uh, 2004, December, end of the year. So I probably got my hands on that. I was probably reading you too. And it's all going like, they lied to me. <laughs> Those bastards, you, they lied to me. So... I I start watching Ron Paul. And I'm thinking about foreign policy because I've, re I've read Tom Woods. I'm reading Kevin Grossman. I'm reading others. I find I, I find myself at this LouRockwell.com website, and I find myself at AntiWar.com, and I read it. I still go back to start reading Pat Buchanan, but really reading Pat. And I'm going like, wait a minute, there's something wrong with this foreign policy thing. So it took about a year. Um, and I, then I was convinced that Ron Paul was right. And I didn't want John McCain within a thousand miles of the nuclear launch codes or the White House. So I asked Congressman Paul to come on the, the Mike Church show. 
And the first couple of times I interviewed him was all about foreign policy. And uh, he convinced me, Tom, it really was. It was Congressman Paul. He convinced me that, that our foreign policy was wrong and it had been wrong. And, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll thank some divine intervention there, too, because I'm glad that it happened. Um, but Ron convinced me and I, and uh, I owe I owe that man a debt for the rest of my life. And then when I started swimming in those circles, I met you, I met, uh, you know, all the uh, people that would become part of uh, my church show. So that was the conversion moment. It, 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 and again, it, it started with Goodsman's book, it started with Goodsman's book. Hey folks, Old Woods here with a surprising message about our sponsor, CrowdHealth. Last month I was in Las Vegas for my mastermind meeting. And those are the smartest, most ambitious, most successful people I know. So it was interesting to hear them talk about their experiences with crowd health. I had one guy who said that his wife got her hip replacement surgery for just $500. And he didn't have to deal with any of the crazy bureaucracy that you have to deal with with modern American health insurance plans. It's confusing. It's expensive. It's frustrating. The prices keep going up. Claims denials are getting more and more common. So instead, we've got crowd health. For $175 for an individual or $575 for a family of four or more, you'll get access to a community of people who are willing to help out in the event of an emergency. You'll get access to telemedicine visits, discounted prescriptions, and so much more. And you don't have to worry about doctors' networks at all. And of course, you'll join the crowd, a group of members just like you who want to help pay for each other's unexpected medical events. Let Crowd Health help with your health care needs. Get started today for just $99 per month for your first three months. Go to joincrowdhealth.com slash woods. Crowd Health is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com slash woods. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash woods. That's a very interesting story because it's, it's a story of honesty. Because especially given the audience you're going to be talking to, it doesn't benefit you to change your mind. Then you have to change your message. And maybe the people listening to you who liked the old message aren't going to like the new one. You know, so most people in public life just don't change their minds and then they don't have to ha have this problem. Yeah, they didn't like what I changed. Yeah. Uh, Sirius XM, Daddy, I, I kept thinking that they're going to, they're not going to renew the contract. <laughs> this is it. This is the last month I'm going to be on. Uh, it's funny though about that because I started planning for being out of satellite radio in 2008, but I really started planning in earnest in 2012. And that's when I learned the ins and outs, the technical parts of streaming radio. What we're talking on, you know, these streamed video services. So I actually uh, started planning in 2012. No, it, it would happen in 2015 when uh, I would get my Sirius XM Christmas bonus, which means it was not renewed in November. Um, and then we started the the Crusade Channel then. But yeah, I I I, I have and and owe a debt to to Congressman Paul. Um, but you know what? I've always been a kind of a critical thinker, though. So it made sense. You know, our arguments make sense. They're they're rational. They're they're practical. And I think it was the practical part of me that was going like, wait a minute, these guys make sense. These guys are liars. These guys are vicious liars. So no, the audience did not like it. But you know what? After four years, by the time we get to 2012, I have an audience all of my own. And it's filled with people that you know. And you were one of them on the mornings that you had to get up early. <laughs> yes, that's right. that's right. Well, that's another question. I mean, in, especially in this day and age, there is so much competition. There's so many things people could be reading, watching, listening to, consuming, and you're just one of them. And so to me, it, it, I'm always blown away when I look at my, no, my, my video numbers are not very good because the YouTube algorithm doesn't like me. Because, because for, for nine years, all I put on YouTube was audio only with a, with a screencast video or, or with just a, just a, you know, a, a still shot and they hope oh boy do they not like that <laughs> so i am i'm i'm spent it's, it's hard to recover from that but on the on the audio download pod you know uh podcast downloads i look and i say wow a lot of people listen to this show that's incredible to me because there are so many things i would feel the same way if i were a musician you know there's so much music you could listen to in so many genres from so many years uh, before today and then going on to uh today if anybody listened to me, I would be blown away, you know? So 
So, so you too, I mean, how do you, how do you, uh, differentiate yourself in such a giant, uh, like ocean of possibilities, let's say. Well, you said it, honesty, be honest. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a member of conservatism, Inc. I don't swim in those guys' waters. I don't tow that line. Uh, I don't fit very well. well I, I think maybe I actually could fit kind of into what some people are doing on Fox if they would have me back. Um, uh, but I don't fit into that and into that mold. But when you when you've been doing it for thirty two years, you kind of build you build up a you know a routine, a bit if you will. So there is uh, you know there's a there's a presence there, and there's the skill that goes along with being able to. And it, it, it take an innocent, a perfectly innocent set of three hours of airtime and just wantonly slaughter it. <laughs> um, and, and again, the, 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 the hardest thing to me about being a broadcaster, and I tell my audience this all the time, you won't ever have to correct me, you little petty, you little petty foggers out there. If I make a mistake because my name is on this thing and that's my real name, my name is on this. It's the Mike Churchill. If I make a mistake or if I get something wrong or if I, I make a horrible blunder or whatever, you will get the retraction from me first. You won't have to track me down. I will come and tell you that I was wrong and I need to make a retraction. And, and, and uh, it's to me, it's that kind of honesty that sets me. Uh, and there are a few other guys that I think are, uh, uh, I take my, I take ethics seriously. Now, this also then prevents you from doing a lot of things. I can't go hysterical and throw out these these these, uh, these just fantastical yarns that certain people do that all turn out to not be true, right? Uh, you know, they're, 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 it sounds good in the moment. Um, uh, I, I won't say any names, but snake venom and water systems, for example. I can't do that. I won't do that. I'd look at it and go like, and my wife is my producer, and we go, vet it. If you can't, if we if we if we can't actually say that no, we know the source, and the and that this is the source, and this is where I got it from, we won't broadcast it. Um, so, are there enough people out there? I don't know, audience. You tell me. Are there enough people out there that are yearning for a funny, hopefully funny, entertaining yet brutally honest look at the issues that you and I have been talking about for twenty years, me for thirty years? And you can rely on me. I, you're, you're not going to have to fact check me because I will fact check myself. So it is being brutally honest and trying to convey to the audience that I think ethics matter. Uh, I think craft matters. Don't you? You, you know, the craft ale business. Let's talk about beer for a moment. Do you know that in 1980, you basically had maybe less than 100 craft ales that you could purchase in the United States? There were four. Four beers you could buy in Ireland in 1980. A group of guys got together and decided, like, wait a minute, we want this beer sucks. <laughs> what, what happened? We're Irish for heaven's sake. What happened to the good beer? And so they got a law repealed in the Irish legislature that made pubs, pubs again. They could brew at pubs and distribute. Well, that happened in the United States. So craft ale now, you actually sell more small batch craft ale beer than the big three. A beer producer. Did you know that? I In the United that. States. Did not. Okay. So you said, you know, you, you were with your wife and you guys were sipping wine. There's a lot of guys out there that sip beer. I guarantee you, your, uh, your average libertarian out there has a short list of craft ales that he loves. And he's, he's going to go looking for them. Well, why? Because the guy that makes the craft ale cares about the craft. He cares about the beer. He cares about the consumer. He doesn't want to ship 400,000 barrels a year. He's content shipping 4,000 barrels. Hell, he might not even ship, right? But he cares about the beer. And you go and find that guy. You're, you're willing to drive a couple of miles out of your way. You heard about a new beer, and you can't find it at your store. You're willing to drive a couple of miles to go get this new beer. You want to try it. And maybe you want to support this guy. Well, I think that because... We take our craft of radio, we take it seriously, and we take the actual craft of it, you know, do, doing all the, the, the things that you wouldn't think that somebody has to do that are part of a routine. You're doing them right and, and doing them well and working with the product, 
reviewing your own self and going like, okay, I don't like that. I, I shouldn't have done that. I don't like the way I covered that. So we were always working on the craft. And I don't know that there's a lot of guys left in broadcasting. And there used to be a lot, most of them, that worked at the craft. Wolfman Jack, baby. We had the smiles, baby. baby. We had the smiles, baby. You think that just happened? You, you think that Wolfman just happened? You think that the, the, the great Casey Kasem, what a voice. Well, I mean, he was a liberal, but what a voice. He plays, he plays Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. He's got such a great voice. You think that that just happened? That, those guys worked. Paul Harvey, Paul Harvey, they worked at their craft. Rush Limbaugh, El Rushbo, worked at that craft. And he loved it. So it's love for the craft, and that's what makes us stand out. So uh, that's the only thing I have to offer you guys to, <laughs> that makes me stand out from anyone else that you could listen to. Well, and, and even, even, if, even if Mike is wrong, heaven forbid, He's the kind of guy who's wrong in good faith. He's not wrong because he's been bought off by somebody. You know, he's wrong in good faith. And that's how I think of myself. When I've been wrong, I've been wrong in good faith. I can think of other people in the libertarian world who come, uh, who come out with crazy opinions on things. But it's not because they just, that they crave crazy opinions for their own sake. It's because that's where they think the logic takes them. And, and I can respect that even when I disagree. So, Mike, do you still have MikeChurch.com, I assume? MikeChurch.com is still, uh, that's my site. That's where uh, you would find all things me. Uh, you would find the radio show, though, on the CrusadeChannel.com site. It's part of the Crusade Radio Network. And hopefully, coming to a terrestrial AM, FM radio station near you very soon. It's it's available. You can get it tomorrow morning. Your station, you could call your station. Hey, do you, I have a morning drive show suggestion for you. Some AM, FM could pick it up tomorrow morning. Okay, fair enough. Well, folks, get on that. <laughs> so, uh, tell me again the uh, the station, the the uh, the Georgia station, ten ten. It's in Atlanta. It's ten ten. Yeah, it's ten ten WXKG in Atlanta. Ten ten WXKG. You know, before we wrap wrap this up, though, there's something that uh, I wanted to say to you. Okay, and that is you, you were a hero of mine. I've been admiring you. I'm like, Tom Woods figured this internet thing out. You know how many ideas of yours I have ripped off? I owe you. I should be sending you commission checks. I, I told my wife the other day, I'm like, you know how Tom Woods gets new listeners? He gives books away. He writes a book and he gives it away. People go like, because I remember my Tom Woods schooling. Tom Woods said, don't let anybody ever convince you about that email address. You send 500 of those things a year. Don't let them tell you not to. But you're going to give me your email address, brother. I'm going to get your email address. And I told my wife the other day, I said, we have all this material. You know, we made movies. I made movies. I made the Founding Fathers movie, The Spirit of 76. I Mother. remember distinctly. Well, I was like, we have all these movies laying around. Let's pull a Tom Woods. I actually told her, let's do a Tom Woods. Give you give me your email address. I'll give you the movie. <laughs> Not too shabby. It's a good deal. It works. And well, and, no, it does. But you pioneered it. I mean, you wrote you wrote a book on this, didn't you? Well, I I have. Well, as a matter of fact, I have I have an ebook on it. <laughs> but, About how to be successful on the internet, right? Yeah, I mean, I did do one a long time ago called um, Five Paths to an Online Income. I'm very proud of that one. That's at paths to income dot com. But it might be, I wouldn't, it's not like out of date. It's just that I would, I would probably put easier things in there now um, if I were to do it over again. I actually have a website, now that you mentioned it, I have a website called woodsmasterclass.com where I explain to people exactly how to, how to do this, how to, how to you know, build up a little something for yourself um, that generates income that's, that's ethical. And it's completely ethical for me to give away books that people want. And then I send them <laughs> what I think is a darn good uh, email newsletter. I mean, it's, it's, I, I take uh, incredible pride in that newsletter that I write to my folks. So yeah, so I actually put it up. In fact, I, I did a live thing last year, uh, Mike, where I said to people, um, I'm going to do a live presentation and I'm going to go from zero to basically building up the kind of, you know, like one of the online businesses I have. And I'm going to show you exactly all the steps I follow. And if you think it was a terrible presentation, you don't have to pay for it. But if you thought it was great, I'll charge you $97 the next day. And my own tech people said, are you out of your mind? Everybody's going to say they didn't like it. No, no one's going to pay. I said, that is not how people work. Only a handful will do that. And I was right. Overwhelming. This thing did 
phenomenally well because people, first of all, believed it would be good. Then they found out it was excellent. I mean, the feedback I got on this was unbelievable. They gladly paid for it the next day, even though they didn't strictly have to. So I decided, well, if it was that good, I should probably put the recording up somewhere. So I put it up at woodsmasterclass.com. By the way, that was a great thing of you to, I was not going to even mention this to my uh, listeners. I was going to just have it be something for the mailing list. So now you let me plug my own thing. <laughs> well, let, let me, let, let, I'll let you, uh, your listeners in on another one. This guy gave a car away. Oh, I did, yes. 2017 for Black Friday weekend. He said, if you have, I'll give you an affiliate link to TomWoods.com. You send me people to, to buy memberships, subscriptions, right, to the Tom Woods Academy. And is that what it was? Well, the Academy, Liberty Classroom. Right? Liberty Classroom. Liberty, Liberty yep. Classroom. Yep. And whoever sells the most, I'm going to give you a, a car. To, a car. I'm yep. going to give you a car. Yep. So, I did. And I just had started the Crusade Channel and the Mike Church Show, and we went on like, we could win that. And we did. Yeah, you won the car. Yep. I won the car. But <laughs> but did you know that I keep giving cars away? I'm going to give a car away this year. Really? I, you know, I, again, I rip Tom Woods off all the time. I should well, be sending him checks. In fact, so, so, yeah, so I did this affiliate <laughs> contest where, so basically I was giving away for the top 10 people, the number one person would get a car. And then the rest, it was like $5,000 in prizes on top of the commissions. I mean, it was a crazy deal. I remember Julie Borowski came in second. You'd be crazy not to participate in this. But also, I like Mike, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I, I wish I could tell you that I'm more mature than this, but I'm not. I am deeply and profoundly juvenile. I, I, took, I took an inordinate pleasure in the sheer badassery of me standing in front of that car <laughs> saying, I'm going to give this away to somebody because I, I like being the, 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 the king of the, I don't say king of the hill because I. I don't, I don't like Hank Hill at all, and everybody makes fun of me for that. They say he's a great character. He drives me crazy the way he talks. I want to be the king of the mountain, you know, and, and, and doing that maybe the king of the mountain. But anyway, so you won the car, and you decided, I don't need it. I already have a car. So you, I turned, it off. you gave a car away to your listener. You gave the same car that I gave you. You gave it away. I've given four away. You no, know, see, I have apparently fallen out of the Mike Church universe. <laughs> How? <laughs> we do the same Okay, we take Willy Wonka, we steal the golden ticket, and we call it the golden truth ticket. One of these tickets here could win you a car, and that's right, that's right. You need to go out there and buy yourself a Wonka bar, but don't come buy a crusade bar for $100, and I'll give you a golden truth ticket. And at the end, we, and another lesson I learned from you um, was you telling me, Mike, don't stretch these contests out longer than 30 days. They'll screw you. It, it, if you if you do it for ninety days, you'll sell the same amount of tickets in the last five days as you did if you if you do it in fifteen days. Yeah, don't true. drag it out. You won't sell anything more. Just do a short time period. So we do it. We do it thirty days. We do two, four weeks. We do twenty eight days. And the high water mark was in two thousand and nineteen before the Corona doom, before the Corona hoax. We sold seventy seven thousand dollars in tickets. Oh my gosh, Mike. So, yeah, you can give away a car when you do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm going to give another one away this year. So you'll find me on the Internet and, and, and for Fourth Jeez, of July Mike. weekend. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. I am not going to be outwoodsed by somebody other than me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to get back. Oh, in the, what? I, I, I need to get back in the game of giving away a car. <laughs> I'm going to think about how to do this. Well, it does come with a little bit of stress because you don't know. You don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could just wind up paying out of your pocket for this car. That's you could. Stink. Yeah. You absolutely could. I mean, it would be a tax write-off. You know, there's that. But, you know, it's a, the, the, the great thing about this is, so, um, I'm an American. You're an American. Our viewers are Americans. We have a lot of problems. Uh, um, the, the thing started small and has become a monster, right? We have a lot of problems. And there's a lot that's gone wrong. And there's a lot that's still going wrong and a lot that we disapprove of and a lot that we wish we pray for it to change. And we work we work at it. But at the end of the day, there is still a kernel. There, there's enough founding father, if you will, liberty and grace that remains out there that we can still do cool things like that. Yes. And, we'll look and 
Yes, and we ahead. should do them. And no, and we should do them. And we should always not be the sourpuss that's having a rotten time and yeah. spoils everyone's. No, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, I want to be full of joy. No, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. Um, and now at this point, a lot of people have, have have concluded that this part of the show is a is a little bit uh, inside baseball. But that's all right. I mean, this is that's fine. I just want to know what kind of car have you generally given away? So we gave the, uh, the the Kia away. I, I actually have a car dealership friend who helps me get the car. At, right, at, so at I a, gave away a Kia Soul, so you gave that away. So what else? I gave Souls away for... Oh, so you three, did more of those, okay. Three years. No, well, but last year we did a Celtos. We upgraded. We did a Celtos. So this year it'll probably be a Celtos. I don't know. The car dealer has had... The, the guy who does it in, 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 on the Atlanta Highway in Athens, Georgia, has done very well for himself. He's a good friend of mine. And he told me, King Dude, like, come on, let's go all the way this year. We're going over. You're, you're going to make a hundred grand this year. We're going to give a tell you right away. And let you know, you're going to give a tell you right away. <laughs> so I don't know, but I will give a car away on, the, uh, uh, on July the 2nd of 2024. Uh, God willing, if I'm still here, I will give a car away. Wow. All right. I got to figure out how to integrate this into my business model somehow. Um, this year, I, I'm a little bit in the hole because of a, it's a long story. I mean, I'm, not actually in the hole, but but I I have a thing I want to pay off, uh, and mm. then I can get get right back into being wild and crazy and giving cars away. So I got to think about this. I'm probably not going all the way to the Telluride. It, it would probably be that's a, a big. It would probably be a car uh, uh, in the twenties. K. That's a big ask at Telluride. That's a twelve. You know what? It, we're talking about car prices. You know what? A Telluride note. If you go in and go like that, no, I have nothing down. Just give me a tell you right. Yeah. 1300 a month, 1400 a month. Is it really? Yes. Can you believe people have $2,000 a month car notes? Oh, geez. I, I, had, I actually didn't know that. Oh, go try and buy a, Yeah, go buy a Ford Raptor and uh, go in with zero money down. Yeah, I would just say don't do that. Don't do that. Buy no, a, don't do it. Buy a different car. <laughs> Buy the Woods Church car, white paper, black print, C A R car. Oh, geez. And you know, I got to, okay, Mike, we got to end this because this is getting so, in, so inside baseball. But I remember I went to a Kia dealership in Orlando and I asked them, do you mind if my friend um, records me standing in front of this car? And, the, and they, they basically said, yeah, do whatever the heck you want, I guess. I go, What's the harm? And because I said, because I'm going to buy it I'm, and I'm going to give it away. And they probably figured I was, but I was wearing a nice jacket and that gives you instant credibility wherever you go. If you're well-dressed, they take you seriously. And so I think they half believe that I really would buy this car. And so they let me stand on their uh, <laughs> dealership floor and say, Hey, I'm giving away this car. Put anyway. one of these on and yes, they will call you sir at every airport in the world. All right. MikeChurch.com <laughs> is the website. Mike is the heroic individual who was open-minded enough to change his mind on foreign policy, even though he knew it would give him nothing but grief. So therefore, uh, we, we need to support old Mike, but not out of a sense of duty, but we support him because he puts out great content all the time and he's super entertaining and a great, highly ethical person. So Mike, I'm so glad we've uh, resumed communication after years of radio silence, so to speak. It's a, uh, it's, it's great to be, uh, it's great to be your, your friend. Uh, and as I said, Tom, I've been an admirer, man. I'm a fanboy. <laughs> I go to Tom Woods, I come and go, why did I think of that? <laughs> You're a good man. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, also, you better believe I'll take, it. as I, as I leave, leave off here, um, for people who for some reason are not on my mailing list, which I don't understand, you can get on my mailing list by going to tomsfreebooks.com. That's where I put all the books in one place, tomsfreebooks.com. And you get any of those books, you get on my list. But I'm putting on a conference, Mike, in, in June uh, where we're not going to talk about the non-aggression principle. We're not going to talk about anything like that at all. We're not going to talk about how could we homestead portions of outer space in a Lockean point of view. N none of that. It's all practical things. Everything at this event is practical. You know, how to homeschool your kids when you think you can't or how to homeschool them better or how to build a business that the man can't touch, you know, or can't take away from you, or, uh, you know, all kinds of topics related to human health. You can't trust your doctor, so what are you going to do? You know, all these sorts of things. Practical, practical, practical to make your life better living under a regime that hates you. And yeah. because I am souring a little bit 
on the traditional conference where you sit there in a chair and you listen to people talk at you and then there's another guy talking and another guy talking and you're only really interested in like two of them, but you got to sit through the whole thing. We're not doing that. We're doing an unconference. And at the unconference, anybody can talk. We're going to have different rooms with a little board outside each room with 25 minute intervals and somebody put a name and a topic. Like I'm prepared to lead a discussion on this topic, not a lecture, a discussion on this topic. So people talk to each other and we put our heads together. We got some smart heads here. We put our heads together. We come up with some good ideas, not only for ourselves to make ourselves healthy, wealthy, and wise, but also to try to fix the crazy society we live in. So it's an unconference and the details are at tomwoods.com slash unconference. I hope you guys can be there because it's going to be a tremendous time. So there you go, Mike. That's what, that's what I'm up to. I forgot to tell you about the unconference. Not to be confused with a U dot N dot un. Well, exactly. I was afraid. It looks like a UN <laughs> conference. But, but on the other hand, anybody who accidentally thinks they're going to a UN conference needs to come to our conference. We'll straighten them out. Yeah, my, wait, where is it? And is it, well, it's right near where I live. It's in Orlando. Okay. Well, I might have to make the trip. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a. I'll put my name on a, I'll I'll go to one of those boards and put a topic on there. Send me in 20 minutes. Yeah. Tremendous. Tremendous. All right. So sorry about that long plug at the end, Mike. MikeChurch.com. Mike Church is our great friend. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tom. God bless you and uh, your work and keep up the great work. I need lots of ideas from you. So keep cranking them out. (laughs) Thanks a million. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at Podsworth.com.